How do you go from the 7 train to the big train without going through Grand Central? Now boarding Hall of Fame Connections. Walter Johnson is considered one of the best pitchers in the history of baseball. The man known as the Big Train pulled into the station at the end of his Hall of Fame career with 417 wins, 110 shutouts, and more than 3,500 strikeouts. His 36 victories in 1913 were just four wins fewer than the entire New York Mets team had in their inaugural season of 1962. Meet the Mets, meet the Mets, step right up and greet the Mets, bring your kitty. This tune was printed on a souvenir record sold to New York Mets fans in 1963. The cover features the familiar smiling face of Mr. Met much as he looks today. In 1963 he was only an illustration, but a year later he became a larger than life physical being. Mr. Met debuted in 64 as a real live action Major League mascot in the team's brand new home right along the number seven train line, Shea Stadium. It didn't take long for Shea Stadium to host history on its field. During the front end of a doubleheader on June 21st, 1964, the Phillies' Jim Bunning tossed a tidy 90 pitch perfect game against the Mets while wearing this cap, currently in the collection of the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. It was the seventh perfect game in Major League history and the first regular season perfecto since 1922. Jim, congratulations. Thank you very much, Ralph. Wow. It's one of them days. Of course, Don Larson did toss a perfect game in 1956 for the New York Yankees, but it happened in the World Series. That, however, is a story for another subway line. But exactly who was the opposing starting pitcher for Bunning's perfect game? A man by the name Tracy Stollard, who found himself on the wrong side of history for a second time. And they're standing up, waiting to see if Maris is going to hit number 61. Here's the windup. Fastball hit deep to right. It's When Roger Maris drilled his record-breaking 61st home run of the season in 1961, it was the culmination of an incredible campaign that vaulted Maris past Babe Ruth for the single-season home run record. The pitcher who surrendered that home run was none other than Tracy Stallard. I believe we were all pulling for him. Of course, not you know not to let him do it. You try as hard as you can, and uh, I think I struck him out twice or three times that day. You hit 61 home runs, you're banging them off a lot of people. Every time you walk around the corner, you meet somebody you hit one off of. <laughs> On display at the Baseball Hall of Fame, the historic home run ball and the bat that struck it are testaments to the feat which finally topped the great Bambino's 1927 mark. No, I don't think I've uh, really had Mr. Ruth on my mind at the time. I was trying to hit the ball and hit it solid. 1927 was a special year for Babe Ruth and the Yankees. In addition to becoming the first major leaguer to hit 60 home runs in a season, the Sultan of Swat helped lead the Yankees to 110 victories and a World Series sweep. The Hall of Fame's exhibit dedicated to Ruth features the bat that the Babe used to hit 28 of his 60 home runs in 1927, each one of them represented by a notch that he marked on the barrel, tallying the total as it grew. Ruth hit his 60th home run of the season on September 30th against the Washington Senators, and on hand to witness it was one of the greatest pitchers in history, Walter Johnson. In fact, that very game was the last ever played by Johnson, who made his big league debut 20 years earlier back in 1907. Walter Johnson, the durable big train, pitched a record 21 years for the same team, the Washington Senators. After 20 of them, he received a day and a set of silver. Big stuff in 1926, but small potatoes compared to today's presents to ball players of cars and thousands in cash. His nickname, the Big Train, was given to him by the renowned sports writer Grantland Rice, 
who likened Johnson's fastball to a speeding locomotive, which at the time was the fastest mode of transportation in the world. Over his 21 seasons in the majors, all with the Senators, Johnson compiled 12 campaigns of 20 or more wins, and only he and Cy Young have racked up more than 400 big league victories. Where else can you see both a larger-than-life baseball player with an outstanding career record alongside a record with an outstanding larger-than-life baseball head? Why the Hall of Fame, of course. If you want to learn more about the people, places, and artifacts in this episode, go to BaseballHall.org, where you can plan your visit to the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, New York, and discover your own connections to the game. Thanks for watching. For more incredible stories, check out our after show, Hall of Fame Connections Extra Innings. And don't forget to subscribe. Blagada!